Alleluia, Christ is risen. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Oh, 
Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. Lie, I lie down, down in peace, at, at once, once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer give to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Here endeth the lesson.
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Here ends the reading. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of
A reading from St. Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here endeth the lesson. Many would say, you can never really know another person. Some would even say, we never fully know ourselves. And given that people are constantly growing, learning, and changing, there is some truth to those statements. But I'm not even sure that fully knowing people should be our highest goal. Which is not to say I haven't enjoyed getting to know this congregation and many people who live in the area but are not members yet. Even though joining St. John's would make their lives better, just saying. Most of you watching already know that I have accepted a call to serve another parish. And my last Sunday serving you as your rector will be May 30th. I'll be sorry to leave this place and its wonderful people, but I'm also excited about what lies ahead, and I'm committed to doing all I can to make sure the transition will be a positive experience for this congregation, not just looking back with shared appreciation, gratitude, and celebration, but also looking ahead with faith to an even better future, both for you and for me. We can look ahead with faith, because as important as it is to get to know other people, it is at least as important, and I think more important, whom we choose to get to know in the first place. All of us only have so much time and attention, 
And like the apostles, I would be remiss in my duties if I were not encouraging you to invest your time and attention in getting to know God and setting a good example by choosing to prioritize knowing God better myself. We do indeed have a lot to celebrate from my years here at St. John's. But as today's reading from Acts indicates, the credit belongs to God, not to me. The best I can say for myself is that I did my best to keep us focused on God and tried to stay out of the way of whatever God was doing here. In the story from Acts, the people were wondering at the miraculous healing of a man lame from birth, who was now walking and leaping and praising God. That guy got it, but the crowd didn't get it. And Peter's address sounds harsh, which I can chalk up to peak and frustration. Peter was faithful, but a bit of a hothead. As an imperfect leader myself, I am encouraged by reading on in Acts. Despite Peter's abrasive start, he won the crowd over, and he accomplished his goal of getting a lot of them to believe in Jesus rather than in himself. That's important not only because Jesus is the proper object of our worship, and not only because Jesus contains infinite multitudes of goodness and grace that we should seek to know as much as we can. That's also important because while Peter and every other church leader will eventually leave their congregation one way or another, Jesus, through the Spirit, will never leave any who accept him. St. Luke illustrates this wonderful reality in the gospel story we hear today. The risen Christ had just appeared on the road to Emmaus, but then vanished after two disciples recognized him when they broke bread together. Those two returned to Jerusalem, and they had just rejoined the group when today's gospel reading begins. Their experience had been life-changing, but inconclusive. So, when Jesus appears to the whole group, it's not surprising the disciples thought they were seeing a ghost. They were just beginning to get to know the risen Jesus. Jesus recognized their fear and their doubt, and he dispels it by encouraging them to get to know him better. Look at my hands and my feet, See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And then, to make it abundantly clear that he is truly risen, that his full being, his body and spirit, his humanity and divinity have triumphed over death, he humbly asks them for some food and eats among them, as one of them. Then Jesus goes on to feed their hearts and minds, giving them a new understanding of the scriptures, which would go on to shape their own understanding of Jesus and the mission they themselves would undertake, proclaiming repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The church's mission is vast, but the power of Jesus is greater. And because we have chosen to know him, nothing can separate us from him. He has been revealed to us in word and sacrament, in music, art, and poetry, and most of all, in the sacred love we share with each other and the world. And so we see the great promise of our patron saint has been fulfilled. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. For this great blessing, which contains and reflects countless others, may the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. Amen.
pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. <laughs>